All right? Can everybody hear me? Yes? Back there? We're going to be talking about club management automation. But first, I'd like to introduce myself, Rodrigo Gomes. I'm from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. So I do speak English well enough, I think. But if you don't understand something I say, I'm not going to be offended. Just let me know. Uh, I try to work on my accent. Uh, I'm from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and I did play for BYU. So yes, it was not a, a great night for me, but I was proud of my Cougars for get, getting to the semifinals. And uh, afterwards, a great match, Nebraska against Illinois. Everybody was there? Yeah, awesome. And so I'm going to be sharing with you guys a little bit of our story at NVVA. So in my presentation, I'm not going to get too technical through the beginning of the presentation. I do have a questions uh, slide at the end. If you do have questions that you don't want to forget about, if you see the link on top, which I'll, I'll give you 30 seconds to go ahead and go to that link, you can add the question and I can see here and I can present on the screen. So uh, if you guys want to take 30 seconds to do that, that is very helpful to you and to me. And when we get to the questions part, I have slides at the end that I can get more technical about the things we do. And we do do, do some crazy stuff in the back end that I, I don't want to bore you with it. And things that I'm going to be talking about. Have you ever been in a situation where you were losing money, that you're in charge of organizations that's losing money, and you want to try to figure out what to do financially? Anybody has been in that situation before? Or in a situation where you're just doing fine, but you want to make more money for your organization to buy some resources. We, we have air cats in our organization. You know, I, let's not talk about gold medal square versus art of coaching, you know, but we do have air cats. Uh, we have setting rings. So some resources for the athletes and for the coaches. So making more money helps you get those resources. Another thing that, another question that I'm going to be trying to answer is uh, marketing, how to find more kids, more players, more parents to be joining your club. So I'm assuming everybody would like that, to find more athletes and bring people to the door. No problem. And if you are successful bringing those athletes in, how to handle more volume? How to create, keep customer service happening? More emails, more people in the gym. So I'm going to be talking about that too. In 2013, I came to the challenge of getting to NVVA, and I came from Brazil. NVVA was founded in 1997, and coming from Brazil, I came to NVVA just to coach. And in 2009, NVVA got a, got a big facility, a 50,000 square feet facility. And I got hired as an executive director in 2013, and NVVA had these numbers. We had 2,150 registrations per year, we had a 50,000 square feet facility with a 53,000 a month lease, which it's very tough to handle. And we're losing an average of 10% per year. So we're losing a lot of money. And I got hired. And to be honest with you, when I got hired, I got my salary. I was like, okay, that's good enough for me to live. <laughs> Little did I know when I started looking at the finances, there was really no money to pay my salary. So we had to figure that out. And then, in 2018, today, we have over 3,200 registrations. We were able to go from a 50,000 square foot facility, same facility, but we gave up 10,000 square foot. And our lease went to 43,000 43, per month. <laughs> Easy, right? And, uh, but we do have an average of 15% net per year. And I'm going to be talking about how we got there. And we solved that problem first, the most important thing, with the right people, is the right people. We had the right people with us trying to go through all my crazy automation ideas, and those people were like helping me to implement. My staff, sometimes they go nuts when I come up with a new software, a new idea, but they're very uh, responsive and helpful trying to get those uh, ideas in place. My board of directors nowadays is very supportive, and we sit down in meetings, and they just brainstorm with me about new ideas. But with that, I need an efficient process to create a great product. And today, I'm going to be talking about my process, automation, what we did with automation. <coughs> First, let's define what's automation. According to Grover, he wrote a book about manufacturing processes and systems. Automation is the technology by which a process or procedure is performed with minimum human assistance. You use automation. 
You have an alarm clock at home. You probably have to wake up at 6 a.m. every day, 7, 10 a.m. if you're lucky. And uh, you use an alarm clock. That's automation. I'm sure you have on your calendar right now a reminder about the next section. So that's automation. Send, send me a 10 minutes email about, an email of 10 minutes before a section. So that's automation. And even programming a DVR, that's an automation for you right there. So we're going to be talking about automation and how I use it in my facility. And we're going to be covering those topics here. How did they, automation help us? One, figure out finances. Where was the money going? Why are you losing that 10% per year? Second, management productivity. How can we produce more money? How can my staff do a better job at getting more things done? Third, world registrations, bringing, bringing people through the door so that we can increase our revenue. And then customer experience. As people come through the door, how can you, I can take better care of them? So let's go one by one. Figure out finances. Here are my challenges. Understand our financial history. See what we did that was right and wrong since 1997. So I had to use some kind of system to figure that out. Number two, learn how to make money. So figure out what was, what programs were doing well, what programs are not doing well, and then uh, focusing the ones that are making us money. And third, control our expenses. Find a way so that we spend less money as we hopefully make more money. So first thing we looked at was bookkeeping, QuickBooks. Everybody, who is not familiar with QuickBooks? Good, good. That's an accounting system. So that's, we're going to go from simpler to more advanced softwares. So I went back. Luckily, NVVA already used QuickBooks. So I went back five to seven years on the financial data. What QuickBooks does is just track money coming in and money going out. If you don't use QuickBooks or something like that in your facility right now or your club right now, uh, I strongly recommend, and I have seen places that if they do use it, they don't use it to the full extent, to the full extent, and it's very important to know. I went back five years and I was trying to figure out where the money going coming in and where the money was going out. The profit and loss statement through QuickBooks is a place where you can see uh, how your net is going and then the balance sheet to figure out what do we actually have in our organization. After getting all this data from QuickBooks, we go to somewhere, we use a spreadsheet. Everybody, who does not know what a spreadsheet is? <laughs> okay, everybody, okay, here we go. We got a spreadsheet, but now the difference that what we did, we used Google Sheets. And there's other tools out there, we chose Google Sheets. Why? There was a lot of data going into Google Sheets, and I needed my staff to work with me, collaborate, so that we could all get to the bottom of what we wanted faster. So Google Sheets allow you to collaborate, talking to your staff through the sheet, so everybody has access, and it's able to give their input of what is going wrong within QuickBooks, within all the information we just got. So we use Google Sheets for that. So in Google Sheets, we also created a budget. Our budget, our budget has about 10,000 lines in it. And why we have 10,000 lines in it? We wanted to know simple things. If I'm going to give a gift to one of my players end of the season, how much is the gift? I wanted that line in there. If I'm going to have to pay the electric bill, I need that line in there. So when I got to NBVA, Things are not really accounted for that way, so that's what we had to do to make sure that we understood where the money was going. So in Google Sheets helped a lot because my staff could help me with that. Now, I'm going to go into things that you might not have heard about. Expense control, Procurify. Anybody has heard about Procurify before? All right. So Procurify is a procurement system. Procurement is something that's different than QuickBooks, takes care of everything that you're purchasing. I was sponsored by a company a couple years ago, a big apparel company, and uh, I thought, man, first we have this sponsorship, which we can talk about that later, what it really means. <laughs> and uh, I thought, man, if I'm with this big company, they're going to take care of me. I'm never going to have an issue. Well, this guy would come to my office and say, so what do you guys want to buy? He would come with this little notebook. And I'm like, okay, I want 1,500 jerseys. He's like, got it. And I want, you know, 1,000 shoes. He's got it. And I'm like, man, this guy's got to be really good because he's just taking these little notes. Huh. Three months later, he would come back with a bunch of papers and say, okay, did you guys buy this? 
And I'm like, I did. Well, I don't have the invoice for that. And then it was a mess. We, my bookkeeper was going nuts with them because they didn't have a good control, the big apparel company, good control about what was being sold, what we getting delivered. Sometimes they would say, okay, we delivered a thousand jerseys. We're like, we never got it. Or this jersey came uh, bad with a bad um, collar. Good. Okay? This, this jersey didn't come the way we wanted it to. Is that an alarm for the fire alarm or something? No. <laughs> okay, everybody, drive the over there. <laughs> I do have water here. Uh, <laughs> so we, so we are trying to figure out, okay, how can we make this big apparel company work better for us? So we got Procurify. What, we, what do we do? Every time we want to buy something, there's a catalog already on Procurify with the prices that we define with the, with the company. I say, hey, how much your jersey is going to cost? I say, $70. I'm like, are you sure? Yes. Okay, $70. So we make our own catalog, and my staff creates the order on our end, just like a shopping cart. It gets to me. Now, I approve the order, and then here's a trick. We send it to the company, and I say, here's what I want to buy, PO. He's a PO. And they said, yes, that's what we're sending. And like, okay. I'm only paying you once I receive everything that we talk in this order. And Procurify has a receiving tab that my staff goes to the PO that the company agree with, and then we look, okay, 10 jerseys here, got it, 20 shorts, got it. And once that's done, we say approve, that goes to my bookkeeper, and then she pays them. If that process doesn't happen, they do not get their money. So that problem of the bunch of papers coming to my desk never happened again. So we actually, I was talking to Chris that takes care of that. We change a lot of their process now that she's working in a different club and that's how they do their process. So that was pretty cool. So that's Procrify. Again, at the end, if you want me to show the back end, I can show you or you know, in private, uh, it's a pretty cool system. So what do we learn after doing all that with the finances? Interesting stuff that we learned. We learned that we had to increase the size of programs with higher net income. And for us, number one was adults, and we didn't have adults. We didn't have adults. We had to diversify. We couldn't count on club volleyball as much as we were counting. We had 70 teams at the time when I started in 2013. So we created an adult programs. We didn't create it. We purchased or acquired an uh, organization that used to rent from us. We partnered with them, and we took that over them. So we went from zero to 500. Then camps. We learned that camps, even though it was small, had really high nets for us, and we were not focusing enough on camps. So we went from 100 campers, registrations, to 500 registrations. And then same thing, recreational leagues. We changed from 100 players on recreation, 150 to 600, focusing a lot of time on the next challenge, which is the marketing on those leagues. Now we got club volleyball from 700 to 300. And you might, some clubs might think, man, you're crazy. Why would you do that? If you have a huge club, you want to just get bigger. And that's what I thought when I came in. Man, if I have 70 teams, I need to have 100 to be able to pay the bills. And I learned that was not the case. I actually had to make clubs smaller. Because club also we use club volleyball is higher expenses. I had 12 travel teams that were going to all over the place that you can't control those expenses. If they're coming to Minneapolis, how much is the flight going to be tomorrow? Imagine Minneapolis tomorrow is just like Hawaii and everything is nice and sunny. Everybody wants to come here. You don't have that in your budget. It's not going to be easy. And uh, gear, club volleyball is a, a lot of expenses with gear. So we were able to lower our expenses by make club, making club volleyball smaller. However, with that, some challenges came up. I went to 3,100 registrants with a smaller facility, 3,100 to a 40,000 square foot facility. So I had to be able to manage the facility and my staff to handle a lot more numbers, which is going to bring me to my next challenge, which is management productivity. Everybody be able to hear me? Accent? Not too bad? OK. <laughs> I'll keep going. Next challenge then, now I have more people coming through the door, now I need to be better at management. Challenges, create and secure the organization in the cloud, very important. Second, find ways to communicate better internally and externally. Third, maximize the use of the, use of the facility. First thing, secure organization. So when I came in with the tryouts, and I remember, 
there was this guy, and the whole NVVA was in, on his laptop. His email was something at hotmail.com or NVVA dot, you know, management at hotmail.com. And all the spreadsheets, everything we did was on his laptop. And I'm like, man, what if this guy gets hit by a bus tomorrow? What am I going to do? Like, can I, can I, you know, can we keep this laptop somewhere safe? So I was like, we, we got to figure that out first, because if we're going to make this thing work and we're bringing people to the door, we got to make sure we have access to everything that belongs to the organization. For that, we use Google. And in Google, you have Google Administrator and Google Drive. What does that do? You're able to get your domain and create nvva.com, whatever it is at nvva.com, and your staff, your whole staff, has access to document documentation tools, which is Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides. By the way, this whole presentation is made in Google Slides. Sometimes it works great, sometimes it makes me have to figure things out there on my end. <laughs> it works great most of the time. And uh, so when I created a Google account, I was able to have all the documents that belong to NVVA in one place, secure on the cloud. You might ask, but how secure is that? I'm like, well, I'm, I'm kind of trusting Google, you know, and they are kind of a big company, so I'm hoping they know what they're doing with their security, even though they just got hacked last week and lost 54 million uh, accounts. Google Plus got hacked last week, so if you have a Google Plus account, double check if you didn't lose your information. And that's how we secure our organization. Then we went to staff communication. Again, you do not want to have your staff communicating with each other or even with your clients with an email saying at hotmail.com, at gmail.com, because if they leave one day, you might want to have access to what they're talking about, right? You want to secure what your staff, your coaches are saying as well. This year, actually, I have all my coaches, their email is nvva.coach, because once they are talking to kids, to parents, I want to make sure that if there's an issue, I can access what was happening. That's a communication about my organization, so I want you to know. So that's, and then, so we created everybody with an nvva.com account using Gmail, and we mostly use email for external communication. Internal communication, we use Google Hangouts chat. I love Google Hangouts chat. They just came up with it this year. It's very similar to Slack. Everybody knows what Slack is. Slack was, it's a great communication tool for software companies. So you guys, I'm sure you use that a lot. Which They have a pretty interesting story, by the way. They're a video game company. And Slack was just like what they used to communicate. And then uh, they sold the Slack idea more than the video game. <laughs> it was really cool. Uh, so internally, we use Google Hangouts chat to communicate with each other, and uh, it makes information go quicker from one place to another. If I'm going through email, I might say, I'm just going to check my email tomorrow. Some things I need to be done right away. So Google Hangouts chat, we talk to each other. We use conference calling. You know, sometimes I am at home, and then my staff is at the facility. We pop up a video, and we just make decisions right there. So that's how we do the staff communication. Form system, another funny story for me. <laughs> When I got to this 50,000 square foot facility, uh, we had a front desk person, very few staff, but this lady, I feel bad for her, she would answer the phone, and then she'd come running to my office and say, Rodrigo, you have a phone call. And I would pick up the phone call, and then she'd be standing by the door, and then, are you done? I'm like, I don't know. I mean, she's like, well, I need the phone. I need, I need the phone. So it was not very professional, so uh, we had to figure that out. What we did, we got Vonage Business. Now, Vonage, it's something more for if you have a big facility. There's other tools called Grasshopper, uh, similar tools that you can just use your phone nowadays. It's very easy to do, but then you create what? You have extensions. If somebody calls you on your front desk, you can just transfer on the extension. You can create on tryouts, very important thing that we do. We create like a bridge call, which means that like if it rings to me and I don't answer the phone, it goes to next person and to the next person to the next person. So once we have a bunch of parents calling and say, "What team? Did, why did my daughter make the better team?" You know, you know those things that happen here and there. Uh, we're able to get to the right to the right person or somebody to answer those calls. And again, it looks more professional. Another thing that's awesome: people call and. and Sometimes they want to talk to about camps, not about club volleyball. So when they call a facility, well, thank you for calling NVVA, press one for camps, press two for club volleyball, press three, so we use Vonage Business for that. 
And then last, for scheduling, we use Google Calendar. Have you heard about Easy Facility before? Anybody? Easy Facility? Okay, we used to use Easy Facility. For me, a little complex system, you know, not very user friendly on my, on my perspective. So I, keep tr I kept trying to find a good system to use and then I started researching about Google and Google has all the tools that we need. It's called resources on Google. So if you have a Google Enterprise account, which by the way, it only costs $5 per user, $5 per user, a Google Enterprise account. Or I'm gonna give you a good hint in here. If you are a nonprofit organization, anybody here a nonprofit? We're gonna, oh, do you know about the Google incentive for nonprofits? If you don't, check it out. You can get everything for free. Google nonprofit. So that's what we do. Everything for free, which means that I can have a thousand accounts, emails with Google, and they are free. If I was paying, it would be $5,000 a month. So I don't have to pay. Uh, and then you can create resources, and then you just get on information, put the schedule on Google Calendar, and then if a court is booked, it does not let you book the court. It works perfect for what we need. And you can create as many resources as you want. Google Calendar, and then look at resources. It's under the administrator tab. That's where you can find that feature and turn it on. Okay, so what do we learn through that process? Efficient scheduling, a business phone system, better staff communication, and more secure organization let us to be ready for larger numbers. We're like, okay, now we're ready. Now we can bring people to the door and provide a good customer service. So uh, let's see how we grew registrations though. First thing we did, plan and draft. That's a great picture over there that I found online. <laughs> and first thing we did, using Google Sheets, staff collaborating, creating a schedule for the whole year. Creating a schedule, what's happening, what program's coming up, we need to have a plan. We want to send an email, we want to send a cute picture on Instagram, what do we want to do? So Google Sheets works just fine for that. Second thing that's very important though, Google Docs. Because then we can write the content of what we want emails to look like when it go out. You, it's very hard for one person on your staff to understand what happens in every program and be able to get all the information to, to, to send an email out. So we use Google Docs for that. Then we try to reach and engage. I'm assuming everybody here has a Facebook account for your organization, an Instagram account, Snapchat, if you're very uh, tech, I'm not a Snapchat person, so, but there's a lot of tools over there. So we try to reach people through that. And to be able to organize all those things, we use Hootsuite, which my accent might not be saying that right, right? you understand that right? Hootsuite? Yep. Okay, and then uh, that organizes all the emails going out. They organize all of them, so I can like schedule all the way to the end of the year. Um, uh, St. Patrick's Day, I wanna make sure this picture goes out. Um, Christmas Day, I wanna make sure this goes out. So uh, it's, it's a very great tool to use. And we use Google Ads, no profits again. Okay, I'm gonna give you another great hint. Google gives you $10,000 a month on Google Ads. Uh, just give you $10,000 a month to use Google Ads. So. Uh, you, can, you need to sign up, and if you're approved, $10,000 a month on Google Ads, meaning that if somebody looks for your organization or volleyball in your region, you're gonna pop up first, and Google is doing that for free for you. And then after you reach and engage with those people, the biggest mistake that I see organizations do is to try to get people to buy right away. People are not gonna buy. I don't wanna be the annoying cousin that says, hey, can I get some money from you? Every time, hey, do you wanna give me some money? You wanna be engaging, you're gonna be interacting, and then you just wanna collect the information first so you can give them even more information. For that, we use something called Infusionsoft. Anybody here has heard about Infusionsoft? No, yeah, okay, you guys, yeah, of course. <laughs> and that's actually how I'm here today. I was in Arizona, uh, the Infusionsoft headquarters after I purchased the software. I was in training there. And then AVCA was the only other organization there, sports organization in there. And coincidentally, with 150 people there, I sat having lunch right across of somebody from AVCA. And, we, and they were like, what, what you doing here? You have a volleyball club? I'm like, yeah, I think this is gonna be pretty cool for us. So that's how I'm here today talking about what we do. What Infusionsoft do, and I'm gonna try to be as 
not as technical, but you explain what needs, needs to happen. Somebody register for a program, okay? And the program is going to happen in two months. There is a couple of actions that you want to happen, right? Maybe a couple of months before you can say, hey, thank you for registering. We're looking forward to having you in our facility. Then maybe a month before you say, hey, by the way, you have an e-pad. You should buy one. You know, you need one for the program. And then three weeks before, you might want to say, oh, let's say even hopefully two months before, you want to say, hey, you sign up for this, but here's something else that you might, be wanna, might want to be do, doing in our facility. So we're able to schedule all those emails to go out for the, for the program somebody's registering for so that we can create more and more sales. And then let's say an email goes out three weeks before a program and somebody clicks on, hey, you sign up for our skills camp. Have you heard about high school prep? And then they click on that. Once they click on that, we create something called a tag. And we tag the person high school prep with a sticky note on your head, a vir virtual one. <laughs> and then they got, get added to a campaign. And that campaign only talks about high school prep until they register for a program. Now, they can unsubscribe if they would like. And if they do register for that program, that tag gets removed so they don't keep getting emails about something they don't want to hear about. Our sales went up 30% doing that. And when you're making uh, good revenue, that's a lot of money. So Infusionsoft is definitely worth investing. I'm not going to say it's cheap, but uh, it's definitely worth investment. Another cool thing that we did in tryouts, and uh, if you guys go to our website, on the club volleyball, you can click and test it out yourself, is that we had a lot of parents that didn't know what kind of program was good for them. Is it like a league? I don't know, my kid, I don't know volleyball. Is that a league, is put her in a camp? I don't know what I wanna do. So you're able to create a form that answers some questions. First name, last name, email, how much you're willing to spend, how far you're willing to drive, uh, how many days a week you wanna practice, and then once they answer that form, we have a big code on the end that sends them exactly, exactly the program that's good for them. And then tag. And then that tag becomes a campaign. Sticky note in the head. And it becomes a campaign to get that, that athlete to sign up for the program. So Infusionsoft, again, amazing tool. I have slides with how it looks at the end for you guys to see, if you like to see. Uh, it's an amazing way to grow your revenue. So what do we learn? First, plan ahead. Plan ahead so that you can reach as many people, potential authors as possible. If you plan ahead, you're able to reach a lot more people. If you're trying to send an email just the week before a program saying, man, this program is not selling well, let me send an email the week before, sorry, it's not going to happen. you got to plan way ahead. Two, collect contact information and send useful content. content. So when you're going through those email campaigns, what you want to do, you don't, you don't want to keep saying buy it, buy it, buy it. You want to say, hey, here are some tips about volleyball that you want to know. You know, here are some interesting article you might want to read. So make your athletes, your parents, engage with your organization. And then third, just watch your registration numbers grow. Like I said, 30% for us. I can tell you if you do this right, it really works out. Last challenge, customer experience. So after you send all those people, people to the door, how you make sure that they are getting what they need, and all the questions are being answered. Okay, I'm just gonna freestyle on that one until that thing loads. First thing that we do is to make sure that once people ask a question, they get an answer. So for that, we use something called Zendesk. What happens, when you go through emails all the time, you just go through emails, if I answer a question, and then Fabe over here, doesn't know what I said, and you're talking to the parent afterwards, you might say something that I didn't want you to say. So Zendesk is a customer relationship management system that helps them with the front desk end. So like, if somebody sends an email to me, I'm able to add internal notes and have a conversation with my staff, and then after the conversation happens, they reply to the customer. And I'm able, as a CEO of the organization, to see all the answers that are going out there so that I can understand what the situation was on that case. So, and Zendesk also allows you to have a FAQ page right on your website. So you know when you go to a website and there's like a help at the bottom or on the top? 
So if you click on that, you can just search and you say camps. And then if you have a question about camps, you can have all the questions that you ever got asked about camps in that website, on that page, so that instead of the customers calling you, now they already have the answer. Then now they're ready to go register for your program. You can also have a separate page that's called your help desk so that you can have the customer go in there and ask the questions that they want. So that's the, a great tool for you to have over there. Let's see if this goes back to work. Now, another thing that you need is once your customers are coming to you, the worst thing that you can have is a website that they can't find what they want. So your website needs to be very well drafted, very well planned, so that a new customer especially can come in and see exactly what they want or what they need. For that, we use something called Sports Engine. Anybody not familiar with Sports Engine or everybody here using Sports Engine? I would like to see. Who's using Sports Engine right now? Good? Okay. I personally use Sports Engine just for the website feature, and I can't explain why. I'm going to explain why in the next one here. But what I like about Sports Engine is that my staff can collaborate on the design of the website. They do have good tools to create a great website. By the way, I'm not trying to brag, but we were voted by Sports Engine the number one website in the country, and they have thousands of them. And uh, it did cost some investment with Sports Engine, but it's definitely a great return for us because our clients are able to go to our website and see exactly what they want and what they need. We're able to track their clicks to the website by using Google Analytics if you guys uh, want to get a little more technical. So it's a great tool for us to have all the staff collaborating on the creation of the website. Then registration, registration. This year, we just a couple months ago, changed our registration to something called League Apps. League Apps. Anybody here besides you guys using League Apps? Great, great. Now, why, why I like League Apps and why it works for our organization? It's because it's a very flexible system. If you have adults, beach volleyball, juniors, you need to have something flexible. The other systems that I used before, they could only do juniors for me or adults. They could not talk and be flexible on the back end. And League Apps has been great for me in the last couple months because I'm running a bunch of adults through there. I just ran a beach volleyball tournament. And on the back end, my staff was not very happy with me because I made the transition to tryouts and we get 600 kids through the door. They're not very happy with me, but then as we went through, they loved it because they were able to take care of everything with a great interface that League Apps has on the back end. And for me, as a technology nerd, one thing that I love about League Apps, it's about their open API, and they have Zapier, which, man, let me, let me try one more time, sorry guys, just because I really wanted to see this. Oh, there you go. Okay, we can freestyle like that. Because they have Zapier. What is Zapier? Anybody here familiar with Zapier? Great, great, great. Zapier, what it does is that if there's something called API. API is they send information from one place to another. What Zapier does is take the information from League Apps, a registration information, and send somewhere else, anywhere you want. QuickBooks, if your bookkeeper wants the information to go straight to QuickBooks. Infusionsoft, if you want registrations to just uh, come in and start a marketing campaign. Google Sheets, so if you want, if you're really good at Google Sheets, you can create all the formulas that you want with the registration going through straight from League Apps to there. And there's so many other options, and I love that because then I get to play with it on the back end and then just the sky's the limit when I'm using Zapier on that. And then finally, on-court execution. Now, my tryouts, I used to spend, my wife is here right now, and she's the one that's the happiest with Team Genius because I used to just not go back home. I would try out, I would just sleep there on the floor at the facility because we were doing everything by paper, spreadsheets, and I had people putting, you know, we were grading kids on the paper and then putting on the computer, trying to rank everybody. It took forever. So because I'm bringing more and more kids to the gym, I need to find a way to get the information out there quicker. And then we use Team Genius. Anybody here use Team Genius? Great. And they have been amazing to me. They have been awesome. They have been changing every year and making things better. What they do is they have apps, iPad app, iPhone app, tryout is happening, objective or subjective measurements. She's a three, she's a four, she's a five. She got a three, she got a four, she got a five. Information goes straight to the cloud. And then rankings are created on the desktop. And then I'm able to form teams now. I have formed teams in about 10 minutes. 
10 minutes with a predefined formula, of course, that we created in MVVA. So amazing tool. We have been using it a lot and saving a lot more money. It might seem expensive to you at first because it's a big bill, but if you keep track of how much you pay staff to do all those things that you're doing before, it works really well. Uh, and the, at the end, you're actually making more money. So what do we learn with all of that? I like to call it Isaac. Just came up with that. Hopefully it sounds right. Youth sports automation cycle. With responsible finances, efficient management, smart marketing, excellent service has been working for us. NBVA is doing what we do nowadays with a 15% net versus a negative 10. So I know I went almost to the limit here, but how does that apply to you? How does that apply to you? I know you might be saying like, man, there's so many things in there. Like, how, how can I use all those things? I put the pictures of the dogs there. <laughs> Just, I didn't want to say small club because of the dogs. So if, you know, if you're a small dog, seven, seven to 200 million, I'm just coming up with a number here, 200 to 500 registrations per year. A big dog, 500 to 1,000, or a huge dog, over 1,000. Uh, how does that apply to you? I would say as a small dog, uh, maybe organization is something you really want to focus on. You know, infusion is something that you might, might want to grow into, but it's a, it's a big tool and you, mean, you, know, you might want to focus more on the organization. But nothing wrong with trying to grow. If you are a small dog, but you're looking at getting a big facility because you have an opportunity, maybe you want to try to get registration going, so maybe it's a good idea for you. Same thing if you're a medium dog. You know, you might want that to start happening to you so that you can reach your next goal. For big and huge dogs, in my opinion, you have to have that system in there because you never know what's going to happen. You never know what the next club is going to open next door. So you want to make sure that you're creating demand to your facility all the time. You know, supply and demand. You know, economics, I don't know that much about anybody here, economics professor, no? So I don't know that much about economics, but supply and demand is important. So if you increase demand, you might be able to uh, increase supply as well, and then prices go up and down. There's all this cool stuff about economics that happen. And then, before that, remember, I'm assuming we are sharing office with local volleyball clubs in my region, high school programs, local sports organization in my region, anything else that I forgot there that you guys are sharing your athletes with, competing in some way? What about these guys, though? Video games, Netflix, Google, iPhones, Android, Instagram. Don't forget that those guys invest a lot of money into customer experience. Every time they, I, go, I just get emails from Amazon with things that I want to buy that I didn't even know I wanted to buy, and I buy it, and I buy it in one minute. So don't expect people to come to your website to give you some money and have a horrible experience and still be okay with it because those things are creating pickier customers. So you gotta make sure that you, uh, you keep me up with the, with the training here. Now I don't have, I know I don't have a lot of time, but questions? Fade? Uh, my question has to do with, uh, I actually get two questions, but the one is, how do you integrate league apps into Sports Engine, or is it a separate, like, do you have a, a link that takes you away from Sports Engine to league apps to fill out forms, or is it integrated into Sports Engine? Good question. So how do you integrate league apps? Since I'm using registration system league apps, website Sports Engine, you can embed into the website. So there's an embedding code that you just copy and paste in there. So that's one of the reasons I like Sports Engine too. There's a lot of widgets that you're able to add. Or you can create a link just to go to the League Apps website, which has a really nice design as well. And it's just like, you, what I would do, it's create like registrations.nvva.com versus nvva.com, which is a subdomain. You have yeah. probably seen that before somewhere. Questions? I thought um, Sports Engine um, does everything in their site to where you don't need the league apps. Because I know some with the league apps, they're missing some things, but yet um, Sports Engine supposedly have the registrations and everything. Good question. So the reason why they use Sports Engine, it's because adults and kids, they don't have a nice, and I have adult leagues, they don't have a nice way to create that difference between adults and kids, number one. 
And when I was doing the transition, the mobile optimization was not quite there yet. They said it was, but really it wasn't, because right at the beginning, you had to drag the screen of the phone, and I don't like that. I want, I want everything to be like mobile. So that's why League Apps for me was better, and I sent people out. And most importantly, again, Sports Engine, it's more like a youth registration system, and League Apps for me, it's more like adult, youth, beach, all those things in one place. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. Which of these systems, specifically for like club dues collections and tuition, do you use to keep track of? Uh, League Apps. League Apps for all. I use League Apps for every single thing. And another thing that League Apps is working on, and I don't want to, you guys getting a good, uh, <laughs> and they're sitting right there. That, uh, it, it, this is not a League Apps presentation, but they came to, to support. Um, the one thing that I really like about League Apps is that they add in the booking feature in there. Because I use, uh, for private lessons, I have been using another system, which is for my marketing. It's a pain because I need to put all those things together so Infusion can start talking to people. And League Apps is working on that booking feature, which not a lot of registration systems have. Sports Engine is working on that with Sports Engine Studio, but they, it's a new system they are creating there for Sports Engine. It's really far from being done, though. I know. Uh... Now, if you have League Apps, do you need the QuickBooks? Uh, yes, you still need QuickBooks because you're, it's a uh, accounting system, QuickBooks. No P&L or balance sheets in the League Apps. There is like reports about finances, but when you talk about P&Ls, balance sheets, and things like that, QuickBooks or something similar is the way your accountant is going to want to look at things. And the only reason why I ask is because I did sign up for League Apps. Um, and did all that stuff and then Sports Engine came in and introduced everything else. So I found myself purchasing the League apps and the, the Sports mm -hmm. Engine just to have both, but yet it was just so time consuming to go. You can take the League apps and put it in the Sports Engine. So it was just a little confusing when it came to who actually does what because I'm kind of new with both. We can, I can, let's talk. Afterwards, I can give you all the my information about why Sports Engine, why League Apps, why I did, but two great systems, so it's more, more about taste. Any, any other questions? Over there? I got a question. Do you do any like, uh, mass texting or do you, do you record anything, any campaigns with texting or anything like that? Good question. Uh, Infusionsoft does have that feature. You got to pay extra for that. League Apps has that feature too, but it's not automated. The scheduling, it's not going to be as automated as Infusion. But Infusion does have that system that you can, I don't do it much right now. Uh, trying to get things completely streamlined before I get, I don't want to be annoying, you know, on text messaging, but they do have that feature. Yep. Yep. Obviously, um, people and culture is really important for you. Where do you look and seek out people to work with you on the day to day? Because obviously, that's really the starting point to a great organization. <laughs> yeah, great question. Very hard to get in Northern Virginia because it's a very expensive area to live. I'm just hiring a new person coming from Minneapolis, Emmy. She's coming all the way from Minneapolis to work there. And uh, my job descriptions are very different than just youth volleyball coach. It's more about the marketing background, uh, more about the uh, technology background, and volleyball as an addition to that. Anybody else? Any other question? Of course. Uh, the recruiting side of things, do you use any kind of software to say when a coach, a college coach emails you and says, I'm looking for an outside hitter in 2019? Is there an easy way to automate that process? Yes, uh, Zendesk can do that for you. Because you, if you get an email through Zendesk and you say recruiting at nvva.com, you say go to Zendesk, and then whoever's getting that email can assign that to the right person and then keep a history of all the emails coming through and add internal notes to that. Anybody else? Okay, Fabe. I, I, I had a two-part before, but this is my second question. Uh, in terms of client retention, how do you, is any, are any of the things that you have already automated or are there very specific things that help you in client retention to make sure that players don't leave or go somewhere else? Okay, client retention, good question. Uh, Infusion, it's a campaign that I would create for that so that if a client hasn't registered for something for a long time, then put them in a campaign saying, what's happening, why you're not, I'm not saying that, but <laughs> why you're not coming to my trials. One thing that I did that was really cool this year, and how am I doing here? I'm okay. I'm okay? Okay. One, one thing that I did this year that was really cool for that was that when uh, we finish a program, I created a campaign that said, program is done, then send an email, smiley face, sad face. 
how, how is your program? How do you like the program? If it's smiley face, we say, hey, great, I hope you come back, you know, he's on next program. If it's sad face, I automatically get an email. Rodrigo, as the CEO of the organization, and I'll, I automatically send an email out and says, when is a good time to talk? And then I talk to that client to say, why you had a bad experience? He's a private lesson for you just to come have a private, just so we can make sure you have a good experience. So that's something that we're doing for private, uh, client retention. Yep. Some of it drives me crazy about sports engines. We got it three years ago, and I wanted to leave out to kind of fix this. You know, since you old, is somebody registers for let's say a clinic, and it's a clinic series, but you give them the option only to register. They only register for one, and then they want to register for the next three. They can't go through that same registration. So on my end, I'm having to create another registration, get them to build it, and then direct them to a different place. And it's just a complete cluster. And so I want to know if the app just kind of fix that or made a bypass to where they can see use that same registration and not create a whole new one. Yeah. I got, and that was one of my issues at Sports Engine too. It was not very easy to move people from one program to another. That's one thing that I found when, and we do that a lot, or adding more things to the program. Now. League apps, uh, I'm not going to say it's going to make it completely 100% easy for the client, but it's going to make it a lot easier for your staff to be able to do that. And if the client adds in there, it's easier on the back end to do it for them. A lot easier than Sports Engine. We can talk a little more about it afterwards. I can show you the details. Yeah, but I know exactly what you talk about. Question. You, you have a really evolved sense of what we would call the technology stack, right? You're using mm. how many different technologies? 10, 12? No, I'm out. 30. 30. <laughs> what is the, what is the pro, and if you're using 30, you probably evaluated 200. Yep. So what is the process you go through by which to evaluate different technologies? Because you, you'll hear that everything might seem the same. So what is it that you actually do? What is the thought process you have or the process you have by which you're allowing yourself to make the choices to figure out what's right for your organization? Great. First thing I wait for is my wife to go to bed because... <laughs> <laughs> and then I get a bottle of wine, <laughs> right? Yep. And then I start going through different things. And uh, for instance, for a registration system, you know, I just try to get a free trial. And then uh, I try to create fake registrations in there. And uh, there's a couple of things that for me are important that I learn. The feature of you getting a registration and then a club registration and create a roster, for instance, it's really not that important. You know, your staff can kind of do that. You know, it's not something that's going to increase or decrease your sales, in my opinion. You know, like, you see what I'm saying? Like, create a registration and, oh, everybody's here. Create a roster. Every, everything looks cute. For me, it's functionality for the client, for the, for the customer first, and then definitely for my staff. So what's going to make things more efficient? So then I go through all those registration systems, create accounts, and then that's when my staff gets a little, I say, hey, it's time for you guys to go to work. And then they stop trying to break the system apart. And then if they don't break it 100%, then we go to the next step, which is <laughs> then with some demo with the organizations. And then very important thing that I have uh, found with those relationships Find software companies that are really connect, engaged to make your organization better and are willing to make a, adapt for you. And so, how can I say this nicely? If you're working for a huge company that has a lot of clients, a lot, a lot, a lot of clients, you know, NBC, it's a big company. Uh, I love Sports Engine, but it's a big company. They're not going to adapt much just for your little club, right? Organizations that are more willing to adapt, I'm going to say Team Genius, they made a lot of adaptations for us. You know, it always makes me more willing to give my money so that uh, to make my program better and help them out. Okay, so any other questions? Good. Okay, uh, sorry about the technology, automation. <laughs> <laughs> it happens, but uh, you know, you're always going to need great people to be able to do those things. And uh, I like the show called The Profit. On NBC, have you seen the show The Profit? And that's where Marcos Lemoni he says people process product. So that's kind of a go by. And that's what I was presenting to you guys. Any questions or anything? There is a, um, let me see if I can get this here back. If I don't, there you go. Okay. Um, if you guys go to bit.ly forward slash AVCH 2018, there is a form that you can fill with your first name, last name, email, and then tell me what you're interested about. I'm going to automatically, automate it, automatically, 
No. Uh, and send you my presentation, which has a lot more slides with more details towards the end. So if you send an email, if you fill that form, you're gonna get an email from me with the slides. Or you can email me at rgomsnba.com, or you can just find me through the convention, and I'll, I'm, I love talking about this stuff. Uh, so I'll spend as much time with you as you need. Thank you very much for coming, and uh, have a good convention.